Good evening. Thank you for joining us on Straight Talk. Our guest this evening is Dr. Samuel Kwok, President of the Association of Private Medical Specialists of Hong Kong. He is a medical specialist in general surgery and chief medical executive of the Virtus Medical Group. He has appointments at several hospitals and universities both here in Hong Kong and on the mainland. In addition, he is a member of the Election Committee and Executive Director of the Medical and Health Committee of Council for the Promotion of Guangdong Hong Kong Macau Corporation. This evening, we will be discussing the potential for Hong Kong doctors to practice in the Greater Bay Area. The question is, is it time for them to take the plunge? Welcome, Samuel. Thank you. Good evening. Eugene. Thank you. Um, thank you for coming today. And, um, we have been, there have been a lot of talk about the Greater Bay Area in Hong Kong, in particular in the government and other business circles. It is within an hour living circle within Hong Kong and basically is a, is, is a no-brainer in terms of expanding our business network because there are 86 million people right across the border. So it's, and, and it's also very accessible for Hong Kong people because it, now it takes about 15 minutes to get there by the high-speed rail. So. Is it, is it a no-brainer to ask, I mean, why are people still have to be encouraged to go to a great, great, great area, since you're the executive director? Yeah, you outlined it very, very well. Mm -hmm. uh, now, the Greater Bay Area is just one area we, in the people, people living there can travel within an hour to everywhere. So, uh, previously, uh, it would be limitation by the territory of Hong Kong. Uh, I have to explain to you about the system. Mm -hmm. The healthcare system in Hong Kong as well as in the Greater Bay Area. And there are, it, this is indeed in two different systems. And uh, with that, I think I can explain more about uh, whether we, ha we can go into the Greater Bay Area and expand our services. You know, one, one area that we always talk about is the doctors and patients ratio. In Hong Kong, it's about every 1,000 people we have two medical doctors. What are the situation over the Greater Bay Area? In fact, if you talk about number of doctors, we, um, in Hong Kong, is the lowest two uh, for 1,000 uh, population. But in the China, mainland China, we have more than two, maybe mm. 2.6 or 2.7. So sh looking at the sheer number is not enough to understand about the healthcare uh, sector, the, 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 the services. Because most people uh, have to uh, have the basic general medical care. But on top of that, we need specialist care. In Hong Kong, the system is that you can visualize the Hong Kong system as a three-dimensional structure, for example. You have uh, cover a big area of different, different uh, needs. And then you have the private sector and the public sector. And uh, on top of that, now we have also the primary care services, which may be on the first floor, and then you, you, you go up second tier and third tier into the secondary and tertiary care provided by medical specialists. So we have that, that kind of system. In Hong Kong, the division between public and private, if you talk about primary care, private, private sector constitutes about 70% of the care. So more, more private. But if you talk about pop, uh, the specialist care, hospital care, you're talking about 85 to 90% of the care are in the public sector, hospital right. authority. So um, now uh, people talk about lack of doctor in Hong Kong. Mainly is the lack of doctor in the public sector in Hong Kong, in hospital authority. Right, so Dr. Kwok, so far you have outlined the, the picture in Hong Kong. Papua mainland, I often hear about the hospitals. And they always, everybody when they're not well, they will go to the hospitals. And the private sector is basically on the minimal side. So how many hospitals will there be in the Greater Bay Area? Do they have adequate number of hospitals or they are they have too many. The system in China is totally different. It's a socialist care system. So um, the hospitals are categorized into uh, provincial uh, cities and then, you know, villages. So we talk about big hospitals, the 3A hospitals, and those are the big hospitals that people go to. All this kind of care, primary, secondary, tertiary, whatever, they go into hospitals. So the system is different. And they didn't even have the system for medical specialists. And they, of course, they are experienced people in doing different specialties, but they go according to the rank. If they promote into, you know, chiefs and then uh, higher, then they become specialists. But we have different systems. We have certification for medical specialists in Hong Kong, but you don't have that in China. 
So talking about these two different systems, uh, of course, uh, in the longer term, we have to build and, and construct a prosperous Greater Bay Area. We need to go hand in hand, go together. Right, one question is, when you're saying that we have different systems, which is fine, um, how accessible is for the people in GBA to go to seek medical care? The people in, in China, or all over mainland China, they are basically covered by the national insurance system. So they go in the hospital, the national insurance system cover them. So the price is kind of regulated. And most people would, would have that. But in the bigger hospitals, they have special wings, maybe divisions, that do uh, kind of international business. So they can charge more, maybe four to, four to five times more. And those are for the people who are you know, more affluent, they, they can pay, or they have better insurance, like medical, uh, the private medical insurance, or for expatriates. So we have about kind of 10% uh, people can go for this kind of semi-private market in right. China. So you just mentioned that the most of the population will have their general insurance by the, by the state and expatriates, they have to go into private... Sort private of, yeah. system. I mean, are they readily available? Are the standard good over in GBA? For, in the now, um, this kind of public and kind of public-private system all run by, by the state, basically, you know, mm -hmm. it's government. But of course now we, we see uh, private hospitals, really, but they are just a few in the Greater Bay Area, uh, mainly uh, invested by Hong Kong people or some overseas uh, money, so they can have a totally private setup. Mm -hmm. But those are small, so it's not uh, uh, a big way that people can go into. But knowing that the, um, Ch China is, you know, becomes more and more prosperous, people are more wealthy, this market is big. So uh, we expect to see more patients maybe seeking private, private sector uh, healthcare system right. so, I in mean, China. We had um, Dr. Dennis Lam here last week, and he commented that there are world-class medical institutions in the mainland. However, because the country is so big, then there's a, a, quite a wide range of standards. So how does, will Hong Kong doctors have a role to play in that, in their area where there are quite a wide range of Standards. That's quite true. The system uh, or the standards of different hospitals, different settings, even different uh, professional personnel are quite different. You know, they're differently accredited as compared to Hong Kong. So the system is, you know, just various uh, in different places. Not that they're not good, all right? Mm -hmm. uh, in Hong Kong, we are more, uh, you know, systematic. Right. We have systems uh, better. And, and maybe if you talk about doctor, even the qualifications of doctors are divided into two, two groups. One the general practice and the other is the medical uh, specialist, which is accredited by the Academy of uh, Medicine in Hong Kong, which is a uh, well-known well uh, standard of uh, uh, qualification. Right. But in China, they don't have this. So uh, it's even difficult to say who is a medical specialist in China. I think in, in, in this respect, Hong Kong can help out in uh, importing standard, mm -hmm. uh, more international kind of standard. So basically like more like a benchmark. For yes. different yes. things, yes. like institutions, like the professional uh, people, uh, qualifications, doctors, nurses, and other allied health. So those would be important. Yes. We can, these two systems can co-evolve like an ecosystem. And then uh, we go hand in hand. I think together we complement each other, Hong Kong and the Greater Bay Area can make uh, uh, the Greater Bay Area, the healthcare sector, into a higher level, another level, mm -hmm. for higher quality services or high-end uh, services provision for the whole region, for mm -hmm. Asia, right. even. You know, in Hong Kong, one area they often talk about on straight talk is we have a, what we call an aging population. What would be the demographics over like the GBA? They've got 86 million people. From your point of view, do they have a similar sort of demographics like Hong Kong or they are more of a younger generation? Um, now, Hong Kong is ageing, everybody knows. We have about 19 to 20 percent of uh, people over, over the age of 65 uh, as of today. Yes. And over China, of course, uh, is also ageing. Every country is ageing. But they uh, apparently is less ageing than Hong Kong at the moment. Especially if you talk about Shenzhen, which is the, the city just yes. across the border, it's a young city. So they have about, what, four or five percent 
old people. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so the demographic is very different. In Hong Kong, because of the population, as well as an aging population, we, the disease load is high. Right. So we have more and more uh, patients to see, both in public right. and Many people said that in mainland they have a, such a vast population, therefore you see a vast number of diseases and more variants of presentations. Do you agree that would be a good thing for the Hong Kong doctors to actually to really practice what, what you have been trained for? That's uh, uh, both for practice and also for learning. Mm -hmm. you know, when people uh, go into training, they need to see more patients mm -hmm. or a bigger variety of people or different presentation of disease. That would be good for them. So I think that is one, one aspect to look at it. If we want doctors in Hong Kong to really go into the Greater Bay, mm -hmm. first of all, they have to know uh, the other system. Right. I see. They have to you know, see more patients there. So start with uh, you know, students, medical yes. students, and then medical trainees, specialist trainees, and then right as a practitioner to work there. So right. this is kind of a gradation that people can go through and enter into the, the market in uh, the Greater Bay Area. Right, so, so let's take a break now and viewers stay tuned. We will be right back. Thank you for staying with us. We have been talking with Dr. Samuel Kwok about the healthcare system in the GBA mainland cities and how Hong Kong fits into the overall GBA picture in the healthcare arena. So President, in the first half, you have categorically said that um, Hong Kong and the GBA can complement each other. Hopefully That's we can rise, lie to raise, rise to a new level so both, uh, both sides of the medical benefit. profession will benefit. So let's talk about how we actually go into to practice in the GBA. I remembered we had the mainland in Hong Kong closer, uh, closer economic partnership arrangement, the SEPA, that was in the uh, nearly 20 years ago now, that allowed Hong Kong uh, uh, registered medical practitioners to go to GBA to work. And, but it doesn't allow the, uh, the mainland counterparts to come to Hong Kong. But recently, um, we saw that there are three doctors and 70 nurses from Guangdong coming over by the GBA Healthcare Talent Exchange Program. Do you see that um, because of us getting closer and closer, do you see that um, the kind of limit or the registration will be more and more relaxed in time, that maybe the both sides of the doctor can easily, um, easily reciprocate? Um, this very interesting development for uh, mainland doctors coming over to Hong Kong. Uh, that's not in the SIPA, as you said. SIPA is Hong Kong doctors going into exactly. China. Um, well, that's because the lack of doctor problem in the hospital authority that lead to this development, all right? Um, I must say, um, this is a problem in health sector in Hong Kong. And doctor is just one piece in the whole jigsaw puzzle mm. of this healthcare problem. Now, even you have uh, doctors, now we don't have enough nurses and other personnel and, and infrastructure and facilities. So uh, now we, we know that a lot of wards, a lot of operating theatres are not open because we don't have enough nurses. So that can help a bit, I think. That is one movement from China to Hong Kong. But I think the other movement is for Hong Kong doctors to go into uh, the Greater Bay Area, into China. Mm -hmm. And that's been open for some years, as you said, in the SIPA. Uh, now, nowadays, I think uh, doctors who graduated in the year 2002 and before or before, they can just apply for uh, uh, a license to work in China, provided they have the qualification of medical specialist in Hong Kong. So you think about that, that's 20 years experience. Very experienced doctor they're expecting. Mm. So I think um, this, uh, although it kind of allow, but it's not allow in a, in, a, in a big way. Right, but will the general practitioners of Hong Kong be able to go to the mainland as well? If you're according to this uh, regulation, they're not unless you belong to the family medicine specialty. As, yeah, yeah. You have to be a medical specialist. So uh, they're not allowed. Of course, there are bits and pieces, uh, little institutions, they can apply uh, specifically for specific doctors, but in, not in a general way. Mm -hmm. Those are barriers that we need to really work out to allow bigger influx of doctors. So, into. President, one area that you have said very clearly in the first part of the show is that while Hong Kong are having so-called a shortage of medical doctors, and let's not talk about the, all the other personnel, mm -hmm. is mainly in the public sector. 
That's true. Whereby in the private sector, not everyone's going to be very busy because it is a private, private choices by the, the patients. So does that mean that being able to, as specialists, being able to work over the border and be able to develop a new line of business, so-called, in the Greater Bay Area, will be a good opening for our, our specialists in Hong Kong? That's true. Um, as I've said, that um, the, if you talk about the medical specialist sector, 85 to 90 percent of patients in the hospital authority, and just 10, 15 percent of patients in the public sector. But you, if you talk about the number of doctors, they're half and half. So a lot of doctors in the private sector serving much less number of people. Mm. All right. So there are a lot of surplus in capacity. In capacity. Right. So where do they go? I think what happens will be doctors go where patients go. I think, of course, there are some patients coming over from, from China to Hong Kong. That's quite true for the, you know, in the private sector mainly. And I, recently, I've, I've seen people from Hong Kong going back to China. You know, we have an aging population and more, more you know, old people trying to live in, China, in the Greater Bay Area. Mm -hmm. So people are moving up into north. Right. And also, the Greater Bay Area, as, as, as I've said, is also aging. So there are a lot of people, a lot of disease, a lot of patients that the doctors can take care of. Mm -hmm. So uh, as I've said, uh, doctor, doctors will go where patients go. Right. Samuel and I, as we both are in the healthcare profession, I remember helping to draft a CEPA like 20 years ago. Mm. At that time, I mean, the, the idea was there, but the profession said, all right, time to go, but not many people will go. After 20 odd years now, the title of today's show is, is it time for Hong Kong doctors to take the plunge into the, the Greater Bay Area? They used to could be called the, the Pearl River Delta area or go back to Southern China. What would be your simple answer to that? The answer is, um, yes. I think I am seeing the beginning of this time. Uh, although you said that doctors going there for, long, for you know, quite, quite, quite a number of years before, but I think we, I would expect a surge uh, in the next maybe five, ten years for private doctors in Hong Kong looking for opportunities in China. Right. So provided there are opportunities. So there are a, a number of things that uh, so the government... So it's, it's still not to too do. late to go now? Well, it's not late. It's just the beginning, I would say. The system now changed and it is a national strategy to build Greater Bay Area, even in the healthcare sector. So with this strategy or with this initiative for, for, for the whole country, I think we have to really cooperate to see how we can collaborate with the other side and build a big, better Greater Bay Area. And doctor, doctors and the healthcare sector is, big, big, is definitely one of them. You know our University of Hong Kong has a teaching hospital in Shenzhen. Has that helped to set a standard so-called or how much has it affected the, the medical landscape? In, in, in the Greater Bay Area, in your view? Um, of course, uh, our university is not going north to, to the Greater Bay Area. And St. John Hospital is, is one, one step early and is already many years. I think and even there are Hong years. Kong doctors in there working as well, so to set some kind of standard. So that would be an example. But if you have to influence the whole area, you need a lot more doctors. You have to you know, go to uh, their hospitals, and also uh, some new hospitals may be invested by the Hong Kong uh, uh, investors. And I know that there are uh, the policy now for favoring this because uh, the listed Hong Kong drugs and the medical devices can go into China in specific places, right. selected sites. There's something that... Uh, that, uh, that, in that, that incentives that, yeah. to yeah. help Hong Kong to you know, build up more so that uh, we have more investment there and so that open up more job opportunities for doctors, for, for other professionals, and then doctors can go. I think if you, you talk about doctor going into China, it's not solo, solo doctors. Never happen. Because it's so risky, so high risk for a doctor, just, you know, move, really emigrate into right. China and, and do business. It's a risky business. So we need really better setups, better investment to you have jobs for doctors to apply, and doctors can work both sides. You know, just now you mentioned about the medical device and medicine. That's something that Dr. Dennis Lam mentioned last week. And also, I know that the Hong Kong government is trying to help Hong Kong residents to be able to use the healthcare voucher, yes, even in the right. Shenzhen Hospital. So you see this is definitely happening, but you think uh, solo doctors, be, be, I won't use the risky, be, uh, there'll be more 
obstacles to overcome rather than a big group to move in the Shenzhen? Yes, I mean, solo doctors are difficult. Uh, you know, you have uh, legal and regulatory uh, restrictions. And uh, also, uh, if you talk about practice, for, for Hong Kong, we have the um, professional indemnity coverage for doctors. We have this system. But in China, we don't. So if you've got a problem in China, a doctor gets to or whatever, they don't have coverage. They don't even have this system. So we have to, you know, really look into all these di difficulties or mm -hmm. barriers that, that doctors can go into China. Then we, if we solve all this problem, if there is job opportunities there uh, in a big way, and people just go in there. Right. Samuel, you are the executive director of the Medical and Health Committee of the Council for the Promotion of Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau and Cooperation. Can you tell viewers what your committee has been doing to facilitate this happen? I mean, so far the show has been, the message is very clear, it's time to go. What has your committee done so far to make this happen? So I, I would say uh, at least three different levels. First, we have to look at the, the rules and regulations. We talk to governments, both the Hong Kong side as well as the Chinese side to really to, you know, for things that can merge or they have uh, mutual recognition of qualifications, for example, and the, uh, the medical protection thing that I've just talked about. Mm -hmm. So to facilitate people doing things, all right? And, and the other is that uh, to uh, really try to talk to, talk to uh, uh, companies or healthcare groups where they can invest more in, mm -hmm. the, in the Greater Bay Area mm -hmm. because for this, overseas investment into, into the Greater Bay Area, they can have, you know, more business in a kind of, you know, some more incentives mm -hmm. like the, the, the vouchers, yes. the, uh, the listed... Right, Samuel, the, the, one that. last question to ask you is, AI is something we've been talking about all the time, and telemedicine has been starting to, to practice, especially in time of COVID. Do you see this as part of Hong Kong doctors' uh, tool of entering into the market in a bigger way by telemedicine? Uh, telemedicine actually helps uh, medicine uh, altogether. So uh, it also helps medicine if you have, have, happens in a big way, in a bigger area. So it's just really to connect people, connect doctors and patients, and connect doctors with doctors. So this would help. The AI, the telemedicine. Now, uh, even now, uh, if you see patient do an operation, the patient can go into Greater Bay Area or other parts of China the next day. So we have to communicate with patients. This helps. This helps the business. This helps you grow. Right. Okay. Right. Thank you, Sammy, for highlighting the opportunities and challenges for doctors wanting to expand into the rest of the GBA. It is certainly something for all professionals, not just medical doctors, to consider as Hong Kong continues to play its unique role in the Greater Bay Area. Thank you for watching and have a good evening.